In the kitchen now with Angie Horkin from the Wisconsin Beef Council. Always great to see you, Angie. Yeah, you too. This is a fun one. We're doing a new take on pot roast, and that's just, you know, when you say comfort <laughs> food, that's it, man. It's my ultimate comfort food. Mm -hmm. Either on the stovetop like we're going to do or the slow cooker all day, come home. It's ultimate. It smells so good. So good. But pot roast needs to cook low and slow it for does. a while. So, um, and this has got some fun different twists to it. So tell us about the cut of beef we're using. This is just your traditional chuck roast. It's about a three and a half pounder. So okay. it's big. Um, when you're in the supermarket, there'll be different names for chuck roast. So it'll be a chuck roast, shoulder roast, arm roast, um, spoon roast, English roast. They all do the same thing. Um, they're all from that chuck area. They're um, going to need the slow, low braising cooking method. Okay. So <clears throat> whatever the label says like that in the supermarket will be good. If you ha do have questions, ask the meat manager, yeah. of course. Yeah. I want a nice chuck roast for my slow cooker right. or for a braising recipe, and they'll hook you right up. All right. A little oil in the pan? Yes. A We're going to just start to brown it just a little bit just to give it some flavor, right? A couple minutes. Okay. Salt and pepper? Salt and pepper. A little kosher salt and cracked black pepper. Big piece of meat, so I like to you know, really season and it. And well. I really like to take the extra time. Some recipes don't call to brown your pot roast. Mm -hmm. They just say put it in and then I'll add all your other ingredients, even with your slow cooker too. I mm -hmm. like to take the extra four or five minutes to get a nice hot pan and sear the roast because that's going to give it a nice crunchy seal on the outside. And then when it's cooking for three hours in the liquid, it's going to keep the internal liquids in and that's going to give you your nice juicy beef flavor. You're also going to get some great brown bits to make a gravy. So, yes. I mean, there are some of those days you just don't have time, but if you have the extra time, if it's a Sunday, man, do it. Okay, there we go. Salt and pepper, this baby's Salt in. We just want to brown them on both sides for a few minutes, right? A couple minutes. Okay. Yeah. So this recipe is unique because it calls for mashed sweet potatoes. Oh. And we're going to cook the sweet potatoes right with our pot roast the last 30 minutes of the recipe. So you peel the potatoes and just chunk them up. Chunk them up. I had two large sweet potatoes, and that's okay. all I'm going to use. This pan was nice and hot. You notice how the minute we put it in here, it started to sear, and that means it just look at we're already getting beautiful nice and brown there. So more oil to get it going. So we'll give it another minute, and then we're going to remove it okay. from that pot. Okay. So we can. Caramelize some onion, okay, and add a little fresh thyme. So at home, do this a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Get it? Big old piece of meat. Three and a half pounder is a good size. Yeah, it's but you know what? When you're people. doing a roast, I like the leftovers. I'm a huge fan of the leftovers, so I say, can you just hand me a fork? I think that might work easier for me. Oh no, I got it yeah. actually. Uh, I really say, and it cooks down. So I, I think a three and a half, four pounder is a good idea. Yeah. In goes onion. One onion, one large okay. onion, about equivalent of a cup, just okay. coarsely chopped. Okay. And then fresh thyme, about mm. two tablespoons. That's going to be something special. And we're just going to brown those a couple minutes. Oh, that To thyme. get your the wow. onions nice and wilted. Fre but the difference between fresh thyme and dry thyme is like a world of difference. Yes. It's one of those herbs where it's worth splurging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on a fresh. All right, so now and we're going to add um, apple, apple cider? cider vinegar, three what? quarters of a cup. Okay, apple cider vinegar. Or no, apple, apple cider. cider. Regular, apple I was going to say that yeah. look like just it's the apple, apple cider, cider that you drink, okay, right. or Pepper apple juice. Ginger. Okay, apple juice or apple cider, and this is just beef One stock. One cup of beef stock. Okay. Oh, that smells good. We're going to let that come to a boil? Yes, let that come to the boil. Okay. Um, get the brown bits off the bottom. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Working on that and right that one, now. Once that's up to a boil, we're going to re-add our pot roast and then a tight-fitting lid. Turn the heat down, so you just want a nice, slow bubble, okay. not a boil. If you boil your pot roast for two and a half hours, it will not tenderize. Yeah, you want okay. a nice, slow, low heat, so a nice simmer. Tight-fitting lid or aluminum foil if you don't have a tight-fitting lid, and let it sit for two and a half hours, simmering. And that's going to be what tenderizes. Okay, so back this guy goes in. Yes. Now we're going to cover him. And hours later, two hours later, we're going to finish him Two and a half up. hours later. Okay, so now? We would add our sweet potatoes. Okay. And four cloves of garlic. Okay. And let it cook another half hour. And then hour. we're going to let it simmer another half hour. And that's all you need to 
Get your potatoes Ooh. nice and cooked through. Wow, does that look And fantastic. the garlic cooked through, and I've got a, couple, a large spoon here. So now the roast you comes out. The, yeah, pull the, the roast. roast out. And I bet it's going to be falling apart. Good. If we can. And I've got a clean plate. Thank you. I don't want to put it on the plate that we... Oh, oh he's looking good. Oh, we're drooling over here. Mm. So then you want to use a slotted spoon and keep your cooking liquid in your pot because you're going to make a gravy while I make the mashed potatoes. What I'm looking at this is it's going to make a nice big batch of gravy, and we are gravy people in my house. So, we are uh, too. Um, it's like, don't be running out of gravy. So lots of great drippings in here with lots of wonderful flavor from the beef stock and the apple cider. It's amazing how, two large sweet how far two large sweet potatoes go. My store had huge sweet potatoes. They look great. That's okay. Leftovers are a good thing. Get all this out. Mm -hmm. I need a bigger spoon. It's okay. So now I'm going to make a. I see some cornstarch over there. Cornstarch, and we're going to um, dissolve it in brandy Ooh. instead of water. Of course, you could always use water, but um, we're going to dissolve it in two tablespoons of brandy to make our roux to thicken it up. Thicken our bit? gravy and give it a real nice, hearty flavor. You bet. So while you're doing that, I'm going to add maple syrup. About two tablespoons. Just to sweeten it up a Just little bit. to my potatoes. And uh, garlic. Two cloves garlic minced. Or ginger. Ginger. The okay, garlic's so already in here. Ginger. Right. Excuse me. I look like garlic. It smells like ginger. Fresh ginger. And I'm going to get a whisk and get this back into, this is cornstarch and the brandy. You could use wine. You could use water. And I'm going to let this come to a boil and let it thicken a little bit. Minute. Mm, these smell delicious. And I, I love mashed you. sweet potatoes. Well, and I can't tell you how excited I am about this recipe because it's something that, with the same old stuff that we grew up with, but a whole nother spin, but something that we could do. This is a perfect, it might be a lot to do for a weeknight meal, but it's the perfect Sunday night dinner, you know, where you've got the time to let it cook low and slow all day. Yes. Uh, the, the sweet potatoes, the color on those is I'll gorgeous. Take the roast back. You bet. And we'll slice that. I'm just waiting for this to. Come to a little bit of a boil. And we'll do a plate here with mm -hmm. our pot roast mm -hmm. and our sweet potatoes. Mm -hmm. we'll do a little bit more. He looks really tender. And if it's not, get it back in there because you don't want to be serving it like that. Get out the Monopoly game and you know what I mean? You've got to be patient with this stuff. And I'm assuming that we did sweet potatoes, but I'm you could also put in some onion in there and some celery and some of the other things that traditionally go with the pot roast. Oh, and just that beautiful. And then when our gravy thickens, we can drizzle that right over the top of both. And we're just about here. I just want it to come to a boil, and it's not going to thicken until it does do that. So we're just about there. Let me get a ladle. Now, the recipes that Angie does today, you can get them on our website, fox11online.com. Click on the Living tab and Recipes, and it's still, uh, it'll be right there. Where else can we get them, Angie? They can also call us, 1-800-728-BEEF-2333, and we will mail these free. Oh, love that. So for people who don't do the computer. Mm -hmm. So this is just starting to thicken up, and as we let it cook a little longer, it'll thicken up even more. But Wow, it looks really good to me, and it's going to have that little sweetness the, from the cider. And, and the, the fresh thyme. Yeah, mm -hmm. and a little bit of brandy in there, and see it's starting to thicken right now. So, oh, and does that look fantastic. A little butter on those sweet potatoes, I think. Yeah, we could. <laughs> we could. They got a lot of flavors going on. It looks never hurts with a little extra butter. Fantastic. What are we making next time? We are going to make a beef barley soup, mm. and it's delicious. And quick and easy, too. It is quick and easy. Love it. All right.